guys that don't have John Welch has been in business for well over a decade. He's used the same contract since 1997. I didn't think there was an issue. Uh, they've worked well for our company for 16 years. We, we don't uh, take people's money and run. Um, we don't have a hard time getting paid generally. New York State told him it wasn't good enough. Another item that we needed was, is time of the essence in the completion of this contract? Check yes or no. Welch is one of 28 contractors in the Rochester region fined $300 by the Attorney General's office. If I need to make some adjustments, I'll make the adjustments. Yeah. I'm, I'm okay with that. But to fine me like I'm deliberately doing something yeah. wrong, I was so angry. In March, the AG's office sent letters to contractors with a history of complaints or those who simply advertised a lot. It does not indicate a possible fine. The AG's office says fines went to those who failed to include things like a start and end date or right to cancel. It's a situation where this announcement is good to make more contractors comply, but the honest contractors who are members of ours have always been complying and they may or may not have left one or two items out. The Better Contractors Bureau protects consumers from fly-by-night contractors, but Executive Director Carmen Santora says contractors should have been given a warning to fix problems. Welch agrees. He's since changed his contract, but hopes New York makes some changes of its own. I think that they're targeting the wrong contractors. Domino and the color is Bella, so there's no... And so how many years have you been using this contract? Uh, Rochester police dressed in riot gear and a New York State police helicopter were ready to disperse big crowds on Rochester's northeast side. Once again, problems started after the annual Puerto Rican festival. I can't say that it was more violent last year. I think from talking to our people every year, um, we deal with the same issues. Those issues include rocks and bottles being thrown at officers. So what we find is that the um, what occurs in the Northeast is not so much related to the festival as much as it is uh, people who are waiting for the festival to end and they're waiting for the people to come by and do the parade piece. The parade is not part of the festival. Upon exiting, people are leaving in orderly fashion. It's not like a, a stampede running out to go to Clinton Avenue. About thirty-five to forty thousand dollars of taxpayer money is spent to control crowds. Other festivals have the same amount of resources allowed. Um, so it's not something that is specific to um, the Puerto Rican festival. It could be the East End Fest, it could be the Park Avenue Fest, it could be the Cornhill Fest. There's any number of resources that we put to play for each one of these events. Um, obviously uh, what we have to uh, deal with that each one is a little bit different. There are no plans to cancel the festival. The festival has been 44, 44 years here um, and that, that is something that we're the, one of the longest, we're the longest ethnic festival in Monroe County and I don't foresee that being canceled, change in any way possible in the upcoming year set. Without a Puerto Rican festival, I'm sure that if people chose to pick a day that they were going to uh, be disruptive, we'd have the same issues. So uh, I, I personally am not making a correlation and I, I refuse to um, be put in a position where that's the way we feel we have to address this issue. Shepard hopes next year will be different from what happened last night. If not, RPD will be ready again. Would you like to sign our petition to end cancer by the end of the decade? Please? James McCauley is fighting for Camp Good Days and Special Times. It's part of Cancer Mission 2020. I want you to keep watch over a bill that's currently in Congress. The organization dedicated to improving the quality of life for those with cancer wants H.R. 2301 to pass. Legislation that would make federally funded cancer research accountable no. and public. Well, not only hopefully save some money, but also will save some time. Well, one of the things that we'll do is to stop a lot of duplication in research. The numbers drive Executive Director Gary Mervis. He wants cancer really to go nice from a death sentence them. to a disease by the end of the decade. But if you're a woman in this country, your odds of being diagnosed with cancer at some point in your lifetime is one in three, and if you're a man, it's one in two. Congresswoman Louise Slaughter co sponsored the bipartisan bill. And I know that his heart and soul are, are in it and he's watched so many young people uh, suffer with that disease, including his own daughter. 
uh, and I would do anything to help him get this done. Thousands have signed from all 50 states and dozens of countries around the world. We were going to present these uh, signatures on the floor of Congress. The PGA traffic at Rochester's airport has helped. The uh, family that I've come to visit, um, he is a cancer survivor twice now. His daughter is very involved with the Relay for Life here um, in town, and uh, so we've been um, surrounded by it and just grateful for everything that's happened so far. Dr. Kenny Simpkins says too much of his practice deals with cancer. It's a major impact on people's lives. So it would be great if we could find a, a solution ultimately. But uh, it's going to take a lot of work. Work the Camp Good Days team is prepared for. Sir, thank you so much. God bless you. At Rochester's airport, Caroline Tucker, News 8. In the heat of rush hour, and just about any time of day or night, it's nearly impossible to turn safely off the New York State Thruway onto Route 96. It gets pretty bad, you know, because you see an opening on one side, and so you kind of get, you might get the urge to get a little jumpy to go, and then you look the other way and realize there's more traffic coming, and it, it does get very frustrating because, you know, you'll see it's clear one way but not the other, and then it seems like once it's clear, the other way you look and it's not clear coming from the other side. This intersection impacts traffic to the right heading to Eastview Mall and traffic to the left for many miles into the village of Victor, creating backups and hazards in both directions. Safety is uh, paramount to everyone's welfare and having a safe ingress and egress out of whether it's a throughway exit, Eastview Mall, out of the village intersection. Uh, extremely important. The recent installation of three new traffic lights at the intersection should help. Individuals coming off the uh, Interstate 90, coming up, exiting up, up towards uh, Route 96, and then wanting to make a left-hand turn back towards the village of Victor or over to the hamlet of Fishers, now will have the safety of a signal light. Or before navigating that. It's a welcome sign for motorists like Sean. I think the light, just safety-wise, is, is probably the most important thing. Time-wise, it's going to help a lot of people too, but safety is probably the biggest thing. And motorists say they give the DOT the green light to turn on the signal as soon as possible. With Rochester Sunrise, eager runners took to the Flower City Challenge start line. It began with a moment for Boston. It's a moment that has shaken Mark Clemente. Two weeks ago, just 100 yards from the Boston finish line, a second bomb exploded. It was surreal. You know, I just, um, you know, I got hit with some shrapnel and, and I just, you know, really couldn't comprehend what was going on um, being that far into the race. But, um, you know, I went from, from trying to finish the marathon to, to survival mode pretty fast. <laughs> Russ Herman was there too, blocks away. Today, he's cheering from the sidelines. We just want to, you know, give our best wishes to the families and, and uh, know that they're going to live with us for a lifetime. And we want, we want them to know we'll always be there for them. And Denise Gretadaro's every step was for Boston. I think all of our hearts go out to the people there and what happened, the innocent bystanders. I do have Jeff Bauman's name written on my leg. I have legs that work. Even if my legs get tired, I'm going to think of those that lost their legs. It's all about communication following Boston. And here there is a command post for the first time to coordinate EMS, fire, and the police department. It's a 5K approaching finish. 911 dispatchers man the phones. Emergency responders were highly visible. This is something that's a, that, that, that you do. It, it lays out the organizational and everybody's jobs are in here and where they're supposed to be and what they're supposed to do. And the response plan heightened. The city's hazmat team also placed wireless gas monitoring devices throughout the course. Well, this is technology we've had for probably about 10 years. Um, we're just starting to implement it in these types of events now. Every incident is a learning experience for the, for the emergency response community. This time, as Clementi approached the finish line, all he heard were the cheers. In Rochester, oh, good. Caroline Tucker, News 8.
Welcome to Oak Hill Country Club in the 95th PGA Championship. More than 1,000 marshals will line every hole at Oak Hill, and there's a lot to learn. You don't want to be marshalling inside the eighth hole here and your phone ringing. For example, um, different armbands determine who can step inside the ropes. But if he gets over here and he's trying to take photos, just a friendly reminder, please, Get back one arm's length away from the ropes right now. <laughs> Flag signaling is a biggie for marshals. Don't go parallel to the tee markers. Come back. Never get on, stand on, on the actual tee. Stand back off here. And then once they've hit, you can be signaling which way that they're, they're going. So another important rule of marshalling is making sure they keep their eye on the ball. So if the ball does happen to go out of bounds, the marshals have to follow the ball and make sure they know exactly where it is. First time volunteers are excited. This is where Tiger Woods is going to be walking, you know, in a couple of, couple of short days. And um, to have this so close to home, um, it's all everybody's talking about at work. Um, you go out, um, everybody's talking about the PGA in Rochester. Others are seasoned pros. I volunteered for three of the last five PGA events in Rochester at Oak Hill. Um, they're fantastic. It's a great event and I can't see, there's nothing bad about it. It's a wonderful place, great, great way to hang out, a lot of people, a lot of fun. All the marshals are appreciated. If it wasn't for our volunteers, this event and really any sporting event would not be possible. It's it takes a, an army of people to be able to put this event on. So when you see them raise their hands, please pay attention and realize the PGA Championship wouldn't be possible without these volunteers. It's called a squirrel slam ceremony. Then those people have yeah, a right a to say to what to do it. in their community. The typically sleepy village of Holly is anything but these days. Shame on Holly, New York! We love Holly, we love Holly! At the center of all the noise, Holly fantastic! Squirrels. For the seventh year in a row, the Holly Fire Department held its Squirrel Slam fundraiser. Yes, I'm all for it. It's, uh, it's, it's a way of life out here, you know? That's the way we live. Hunters as young as 12 years old can enter up to five squirrels for weighing. The biggest wins a prize. It's wrong. I am, I'm against the gun laws. They shouldn't have a gun until they're at least 21 or so. When, they, when they're well in their mind of what they should do and what they shouldn't do. I think they're wrong. Holly Fire officials would not say how much they even raise from the Squirrel Slam and whether or not they'll consider a different fundraiser next year. Everybody has the freedom of speech and have their own opinions. I mean, that's what our governments and, and countries founded on. You didn't have to be in Holly to hear of the Squirrel Slam or the controversy surrounding it. Online petitions and opinions circulated quickly. Despite the protests, the haunt went on, and so does the debate. But the time for change has come. In Orleans County, and I'm one county away, so Amy Young, News 8. We want to make sure that they get everything that they need as quickly as possible. Practice makes perfect, and the Red Cross agrees. That's what we always train for, is what could happen with the thought in mind we never want it to happen. But if it should, we're good to go. Today, the local Red Cross chapter held a hurricane scenario disaster drill. Checking out the map where we're going and what streets are closed. Nearly 100 volunteers ready and willing to respond. Hurricane Rock has, uh, has hit the area and caused some flooding and some damage across the area. While the Red Cross doesn't expect hurricanes to impact Rochester, there is always the possibility. It's been almost eight months since Superstorm Sandy hit the New York region. The perfect example that the unexpected can happen. We're learning here because it could happen here. Remember the original uh, storm track for Sandy brought it right up 390 right into Rochester. It was only by a weather change that it didn't happen here. So how does the Red Cross prepare? Today's drill showed it takes an army to respond to any disaster. You see all the disciplines in the background and you see feeding, sheltering, government operations, disaster assessment, logistics, transportation. They're all represented here as part of the response the Red Cross would normally send to a disaster area. So we can go straight down east. Outside the headquarters, several teams dispatched to different parts of Rochester assessing the damage that Hurricane Rock caused. We are simulating that there's a hurricane in this area and we're just going door to door and uh, simulating assessing each building for damage. Help us get our 
supplies such as food, water, um, other relief supplies into the areas that are hardest hit to know where those are and then to start to, to kind of coordinate the response afterwards. A response that may have been practiced today but could be the real deal tomorrow. These volunteers are now prepared to go anywhere in the state or anywhere in the country and do the exact same thing with more training, more preparedness and more confidence. In Rochester, Ashley Zoka, News 8. A day after fire tore through a village block here in downtown Palmyra, tenants and building owners still cannot get inside because it is still sectioned off as part of an investigation. Once it came up and over, then it hit the roofs and went all across. No Frank answer. Realm could only sit and watch. This is the older portion, no firewalls. Until the fire reached his building. He bought the one next to Mark's Pizzeria 20 years ago. I hope they can save them, but it's, it doesn't look good. Frank paid back the May rent to all of his tenants, including Jamie and James Rose. And our daughter, and that's all we need. Everything else can be replaced. Who any day are expecting their first child. So I turned around to leave, and I look out the window, and it's just a big, huge cloud of smoke. So I quick run downstairs to see what's going on, and... There's flames shooting out the window next to, right next to where I was standing. This was the newlyweds' first apartment. Missing in the charred remains, a piece of jewelry. My wedding ring. <laughs> My fingers are too swollen to wear it. And it's gone. And so is everything else gone, except what they packed in the car. Thank you. An extra change of clothes, the diaper bag with a couple pairs of clothes for the baby, the car seat, and the stroller. All Cheryl Payne O'Connor can do is pray. We don't have insurance because we can't afford it. So anything that's lost in there um, is, is gone and we'll have to replace it somehow. Cheryl's one of the founding members of the Sparker Divinity Congregation, which has grown from five to 30. They will look for a new home and hopes others will find one too. Well, we're strong, we're growing, we'll definitely, we'll be fine. And I just pray for the other people that lived in the apartments above and the other businesses. I hope that they're all right as well. Tenants and building owners hope that they can get a closer look of exactly what was damaged by at least Monday. In Palmyra, Caroline Tucker, News 8.